Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Live or a new metaphor for your toolbox. Happy 4th of July. You know, I just looked up uh, number four and uh, went to Wikipedia, whatever, said that four is the only cardinal number in the English language whose letters and value is the same. F-O-U-R. One, two, three, four. I thought that was interesting because four is a complete number. Four in mythology is the four corners of the world. So it includes the field of phenomena. It is all, everything. So what is the Declaration of Independence? On the 4th of July, you see, everything has a little, has mythological reference. It's not on the 3rd of July. It's not on the 10th. <laughs> on the 4th. Isn't that interesting? The Declaration of Independence from 4. Well, 4. <laughs> Let's take a look. So, Tolley's quote for the day. And these, uh, in these Zen Live Talks are, uh, I use a, a Tolley quote from my box of quotes from The Power of Now, just as a, uh, a kickstarter. You know, like when you start your motorcycle, you kick it, kick, uh, kickstart it. Boom. Okay, so this is a kickstart. Spiritual realization is to see clearly that what I perceive, experience, think, or feel is ultimately not who I am that I cannot find myself in all of those things that continuously pass away. Spiritual realization is to see clearly that I am, that what I perceive, experience, think, or feel is ultimately not who I am. In other words, what I feel, perceive, experience, or think is number four. Four that includes all. Four contains all. Like the cup contains all the soup, but the cup transcends the soup. The cup sees the soup. The cup is transcendent spiritual realization. So spiritual realization is transcendent realization. It sees the four and what the four contains. So it's a liberation from the container. It's a liberation uh, from experience as being my who I what I am, you see. So we 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 are conditioned to f believe that we that I am what I experience. Uh, and that experience is is a form of thought, experience, emotion, whatever. So I identify with form, and then I'm trapped in form, because form passes away. Form is impermanent, says the Buddha. It's a flowing, it's a fountain. The fountain water passes away. That's why we love to meditate on fountains sit there and watch a fountain forever because it, it's a metaphor that reflects life itself passing being born and passing away at the same time see we like to separate being born and dying living and dying we separate them you see but in the fountain they're the same the fountain is being born and dying simultaneously you see so life is whole when we can simultaneously hold and transcend dying and living, death and life and death. You see that? You get an idea that the transcendent seeing of experience being born and dying is not the experience. So the seeing 
is transcendent of what it sees. Therefore, the seeing is timeless. The seeing does not die. The seeing is eternally now. Now is eternally seeing itself being born and dying. But we in consciousness, a collectively held consciousness that is conditioned by our culture, civilization, our humanity even, you see, feels like it's contained in the form that it experiences. So it's constantly trying to get free from the pain of being contained in the form it experiences. To liberate itself from being identified with experience that is passing away, you see. So this impulse to transcend is the impulse of the whole creation of the cosmos to self-transcend, to be liberated. So this declaration of independence that we celebrate as a, nas as a uh, national birthday is much, much more. It's more than just a moment in time when uh, some people signed a document and said, uh, okay, uh, England, we're separate from you. It's much, much more than just a historical moment, you see. This is, a, this is a, a celebration of our transcendence, the freedom of transcendence. It's only in transcendence that we are free. Otherwise, we are locked into the forms that we believe are real. This is why this old, all this debate about, you know, everything's unreal, nothing means anything, everything is unreal. Well, that's just one step of the seeing. Uh, when you say everything is unreal, it's all an illusion, that's identification with the thought that it's all an illusion. That itself is entrapment, you see. It's a self-enclosed system where you think, oh, it's all an illusion, it's all Maya. You know, don't mean nothing. So if, I had, if that's what I believe and invest in, I am investing in the form of that idea that there is no, that, that it's all an illusion. That itself traps us in my own illusion. We don't go far enough. We don't keep transcending. Transcend even that. Drop that. Everything we hold, everything we clutch, every idea, every form, every thought, every experience, every feeling, open the hand. Let it go. Keep transcending. Keep declaring your independence. Never get stuck, you see. So we were looking at the uh, I am number four. See, one, two, three, four. I never realized that. Isn't that interesting? And if you notice that four is also the cross. Uh, the Celtic cross is a better example of that because each arm is equal. Uh, the traditional Christian cross, you know, this one here, uh, the, the vertical is longer than the horizontal, I guess because they got to stick it in the ground. But if you stick it in the ground, it's kind of like that. But then, then you can't hang a body off of it, you see. But the Celtic cross uh, is, better symbol, is a better symbol, is a, uh, is a better uh, representation of the eternal four, F-O-U-R. Uh, north, east, south, west, the four corners of the world, you see. And this intersection here, this little intersection here, Celtics, the Celtic crosses like to have that circle there because this is, uh -huh, the circle is, not only is it the symbol of Zen, it's the one. Okay, so circle represents the transcendent one that includes all that precedes it. But the, trend, but the seeing, the, the act of transcendence, you see, is not something, is empty. So this is where you get in, into Zen when you say, 
uh, form is emptiness and emptiness is form. Well, transcendence is emptiness and it includes all form. So, emptiness and form. Emptiness is form and form is emptiness. Because transcendence is empty, yet it includes form. So anyway, those are very abstract ideas, but it's experiential. When there is a creative act of transcendence. So transcendence is also creative. And we all experience creativity. Uh, my wife and I both have our own field of creativity. She is very creative in cooking, uh, crafting, and just opening a box. <laughs> you know, so, uh, so she far surpasses me in that field. Uh, so she's constantly coming up with uh, uh, transcending, you know, in the kitchen. All right, so you're going to, uh, you got a recipe, and that is a, uh, uh, a pattern that creates a particular meal. But, but, that's not a, a, a creative res a creative recipe. It's when you open the refrigerator and you look at what you got and you create a meal out of that. And that's, I think that's a TV show where a cook has given some ingredients and they have to create a dish, you see. So that's creativity in that a creative act creates something that includes all the ingredients that are given but that particular recipe never existed before. So the recipe, the creative recipe, transcends and includes the ingredients that are given. You can't include in a recipe something that you can't put in the recipe. You can't, you can't include imaginary turmeric. I mean, there has to be some turmeric, you know. You can't include imaginary potatoes. You have to have potatoes. So, so creativity or transcendence rises out of what is given. This is the MacGyver principle. So MacGyver creates a tool or a way out of a fix by what is given. He doesn't, oh, I wish I had a, I wish I had a pair of scissors. No, he doesn't have a pair of scissors. <laughs> Or I wish I had a ladder. No, he doesn't have a ladder. So he creates a ladder out of what's given, you see. So creativity, the ground of creativity is what's given to you. So your life is what's given to you. If you live in Blackstone, that's what's given. You can't create yourself in California. You have to create yourself out of Blackstone. You have to transcend Blackstone now that doesn't mean leaving Blackstone. It means creating yourself as a new person, as a new being, as a new way of being, out of what's given. That doesn't mean you can't move to California, but then if you go to California, you have to create it out of what's given to you in California. But the creative act of transcendence will be the same. It doesn't matter if you create yourself out of Blackstone or create yourself out of uh, Hollywood. The creative act of transcendence is who you are. So it doesn't matter where you are and what's given. You see? You get the idea? You are, how did Poli put it? You are spiritual realization. And you cannot find yourself, you see. If you are the cup, you can't find yourself in the soup. You see, the cup transcends the soup. It's a good metaphor, right? The cup transcends the coffee. The, the cup is the spiritual realization of all that it contains. So, the, uh, you, the cup cannot find itself in the coffee. 
the coffee is constantly passing away, get new coffee. Staying with the metaphor, but the cup stays the same. But the cup, you see, as a metaphor, is not something. The cup is the realization that you are the realization, the seeing, the formless seeing, the formless seeing that holds all the scene. This is a leap in consciousness. This is a evolutionary leap in your personal evolution. Your whole life is driving you towards this leap. And the leap is made from the pain of the cross. Now I'm going to, I don't know if I should jump into Christian ideology or not, you know, because people get all <laughs> upset and confused and argue and they miss the point. So the point is, better get back to four. And you see that little circle right there is the transcendent unity of all that is in the four corners. So there is a death and a dying here. There is a unity of death and life as one. So to it, the one, this transcendent creative seeing, okay, not what is seen, but the act of this, the leap of seeing suddenly, miraculously, uh, magically, people call this grace, sees the whole, whereas before it didn't see. I was lost, now I'm found. I was lost, now I'm found. So that, all these things lost and found, so the creative transcendent seeing is being found. And what is found? It's not something. Because now you see all somethings in what is given in your life. You don't see all, you don't see all that ever happened. You know, it's not like, uh, oh, I see Egypt and Asia and I see the beginning and the ending of the everything. I see all that doesn't, no. You just see the whole of what is given in your life as a unity instead of as a broken instead of being broken into incompatible parts, a shattered, fragmented mind that's monkey jumping around from this, oh no, oh no, I wish I had that, oh why did this happen, yo. Instead of jumping around in that cage, you see, suddenly there is a unification of seeing into seeing itself. And everything fits, you see, everything now is number four. Everything is complete. There's no more problem when everything is complete. It's only when there is a feeling that it's unfinished. There's more. I got to do more. I got to do less. I'm doing too much. I don't have enough. I need to go somewhere else. I need another marriage. I need another car. Yeah, yeah, you know, on and on and on. This fragmented broken sense of the world in pieces is suddenly unified when the mind makes its leap, when the mind makes its transcendental leap, you see. This is what Avatar was all about. Jake Sully was in a divided world between the Navi and the Sky Papal, and he couldn't be one. He was two. There must be one. You see, so the urge, the drive of the universe of you and me is to be one. But you can't find the one tomorrow. You can't find it in California. You have to find it where you are. Because that's the whole cosmos. Where you are is 
the whole cosmos personified as you. You are the cosmos being aware of yourself at a particular point. So the whole cosmos is already balanced and unified. It's not broken into a bunch of, uh, it's not busted up like a, a 4th of July rocket, <laughs> you see. But the experience of oneness is metaphorically represented by the fireworks show. Bam, I'm awake. I have declared my independence. Bam, 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 bam. And our minds open up. Oh, wow. So that wow of the fireworks is the wow of transcendent creative seeing. I see the whole now, and it's wondrous. I am found. I am complete. You see. Now you can translate that or transfer that into Christian terminology and it works fine. As long as you realize that you are, that the creative seeing that transcends the four corners of the earth is the Christ. So the Christ is not some historical person back there uh, in Jerusalem in the same way that the Declaration of Independence is not just on the 4th of 1776. If we locate it, if we, look, if we make transcendence creative seeing into time, then we celebrate it in the past. So we celebrate the Declaration of Independence when we just have the horizontal view, past, future, right or like here all right so we if we look if we're in time we're going to celebrate here's the fourth you see and here we are somewhere a long time you know so we keep celebrating the past well that's fine but that's not the complete seeing the complete seeing celebrates the fourth as now but you see here again, that's objective. We're celebrating the 4th, certainly, on this particular day in uh, 2017. And we got the flags out on the street and people got their little fireworks all waiting up for tonight. They're going to blow it off, you see. So that's celebrating yesterday, today. But that's not the living 4th of July. The living 4th of July is not objective in time, but is, is subjective as you or I. I am. Okay. So the awakening of I am is the declaration of your independence through the awakening of Transcendent creative seeing, which sees suddenly in an explosion of fireworks that you are already and always whole and free from the content of your experience. In other words, you are already and always free from what you perceive, experience, think, feel. That is not who you are. But I believe I'm that. And when I believe I'm what I, what I think or feel or experience or perceive, if I believe I am that, then I am locked in time. And the only way I can celebrate my independence is in time as something happened in the past and it's a birthday and every year I celebrate it on that birthday. Like our own birthday, you see. So we celebrate our birthday because it happened at a, the Big Bang happened here for me in 1936. Okay, and that was the Big Bang when I was born. And so now, if I just celebrate myself in time, every year on that particular December 15th, you see, I will uh, have a cake and blow it and have, add another candle and blow out the candle. What does that blowing out the candle mean? That's nirvana. That's the description of the Buddha awakening when the candle is blown out. When the candle of time is blown out, you are born again. And that's not a renewal. See, people get have marriage renewals. That's not a, a 
being born again does not mean that you are just renewing your birth or celebrating your birth freshly. No. Born again means entirely, <laughs> really being born again and liberated from time as creative, transcendent seeing that includes everything you experience and have known, your whole history. The transcendent seeing is not history, but it includes your history, yet it creates a new history, a new being, a new way of being in the world, which is a new way of being in the world is to live in the spiritual realization or to live in the clarity that sees over and over constantly that you are not what you experience, feel, think, and feel. That is the content of the soup, but you are not the soup. You are the seeing of the soup. But you see, this is so difficult for us to even communicate because we are all locked into the belief, the fundamental belief that I am something. I can't just be seeing, because seeing is nothing. <laughs> but seeing, consciousness, awareness, is who we are, you see. But that includes all that we perceive and transcends it. So it's constantly creating itself. The universe is constantly creating itself. This is not a static clock universe created once by God or the Big Bang. It makes no difference. It's like the thing just sits here. But things changing into other things. But things, you see, forms, our fundamental belief in this re culture, materialistic culture, is that we are forms, we are things, and we change and we die. But that's a view entirely from the horizontal. That, that view is entirely in time. Time and form exist together. You can't have one without the other. You can't have time without some form moving in time. If, if you just look at empty space, there's no time. You only have time when you have an object there that moves. So time is movement of objects. In the mental sphere, time is movement of thoughts. When there is no movement of thought, there's no time. No movement of thought drops you into the vertical, drops you into now, you see. So there suddenly there is movement, but there is also not movement. The not movement is the seeing of the movement, but the not movement, the stillness, the silence, is not what is moving or noisy. I mean, we throw these words around all the time, but we really don't have a total grasp, a snap, a breakthrough, gestalt, or seeing of the four corners of the whole. You don't see the whole gradually. You don't see gradually, you see all at once. Bam, I see. I mean, this is a common, this is everyday experience. It's like we go through life with a flashlight and we can't see the whole room because we're only seeing pieces of it at a time. So I think the world is fragmented into pieces. And then suddenly someone flips on the light, boom, and I see the whole thing at once. You don't see it in stages. You only see it in stages if you're operating a flashlight. Now that's in time. I want to see the whole room. I got a flashlight. I look over there. And then I move over there, and, and then memory holds it together, because now I'm, I'm looking over there, but I remember that it's over there, so that still exists in memory as I go around and put all the room together. But I'm going to miss stuff, so there's going to be holes in my reality here if I'm just using a flashlight of consciousness, 
you see. Suddenly somebody flips on the light and I see the whole room all at once. I don't select one thing or another, I see the whole thing. That's a gestalt. You walk into a room and there is a gestalt perception of the whole room and then you begin to look at, I look at that person and I look over there and look at there. We watch uh, the British Mysteries and invariably uh, we're watching, right now we're watching uh, Hinterland and there is a murder and the detective is called and he walks into the room and the camera goes around and looks at everything he is looking at and he notices, oh, there's a matchbook there. Oh, there's a spot of blood there. There's a hair over there. There's something there. So he's looking at the pieces, you see. He's looking at the, he's looking at the uh, uh, perceptions, experience. He's not really thinking anything because he's just looking. He's not really feeling anything. He's just looking, like with a flashlight of awareness. He look, boom. And the whole program, the whole movie, is about putting the pieces together until you get a snap, I know who did it. Spiritual realization is to see clearly that what all the clues that I perceived and experienced and felt is ultimately not the whole picture. The whole picture is greater than the parts. If you add all the pieces of this room together, methodically, you listed every single thing in the room, you would still not have the whole gestalt of the, picture, of, the aware, of the room when you walk in the room and flip on the light. You get that? In other words, if you walk into this room, your room where you're at, and you piecemeally with a flashlight, supposing it was all dark, and you looked at every single thing with that flashlight and wrote it down and drew a room, you would never come to the whole room that you would see when you just flipped on the right light and saw the whole thing. So our consciousness that we believe is, is the whole consciousness is only a flashlight consciousness that is constantly trying to get to the whole picture by putting the pieces together. And we never arrive at the whole because you can't get there gradually. You can't see the whole room by gradually listing and looking at every item in here because if I look at this, I say, okay, well, that's something in the room. But then I zoom in and then I, well, there's a little thing there, so there's that. And then I zoom in more. Now that's made up of stuff, you see. So everything is a whole made up of parts. So when you start going into it, everything you look at is made up of parts. So there's no end to the parts. It's like a hall of mirrors, you see. So I would spend, I would spend eternity just trying to get a picture of this, not to mention the whole room that it's in. And then the room is in Blackstone, and Blackstone's in Virginia, and Virginia's in the United States. You see what I mean? You can't discover unity or the whole with a flashlight, a pen light, or a searchlight, you see, or a microscope, or a telescope. So all these tools of selective consciousness is eternally trying to see the whole and restore unity to all the fragments to put the pieces of the puzzle back together, you see. And we can't do it because you can't do it piecemeal. Not to mention that the universe is changing while you're looking at it. The Greek philosopher, you can't step in the same river twice. Well, <laughs> there's a river of life and now I'm going to try and understand the river, uh, but it's changing while I'm looking at it. You're changing while you look at yourself. That's why you can't see yourself. Because you're changing as you look. So there is no you. That's what he means here. When I cannot find myself and all those things that are continuously passing away. So the world is continually passing away and being born at the same time. You see the fountain. Well, no wonder we can't find unity. No wonder we can't find wholeness. No wonder we can't find completeness. 
because we're trying to do it gradually, piecemeal. You get that? There's no means to the end. Oh, well, if I do enough yoga and meditation or go to church more or study the Bible more or whatever the means, or go to therapy uh, or move or get rid of that person or whatever the means, you see, I never get to the end. I never get to the end. There was a, I'll end with this thought puzzle of uh, um, Zeno. So he says if you shoot an arrow, you'll never get to the target because the arrow has to go halfway. And to get halfway, it has to go halfway. And it has to go halfway. It has to go halfway. And halfway. And halfway. And halfway. So the arrow just falls into infinity. It can never get beyond halfway. Because halves keep dividing. So you never get to the target. You're always just going <laughs> halfway. <laughs> and halfway, you see. So this reductionism, this flashlight consciousness that we are, uh, that we believe is the only light, will just get us halfway. We never see the whole because you can't see the whole piecemeal. So that's what Buddhism is about. That's what uh, the resurrection is about. Uh, the resurrection is a metaphor for the declaration of independence and the creative seeing of the four corners of the cross all at once, not one at a time. You don't see the whole cross by just count by, well, I'll see one, then I see two, then I see three, then I see four, but now I got to go back. And this has changed, so I go by, look at that, look at that, look at that, but wait a minute, that's changed, and look at that, oh, wait a minute, those other three have changed. <laughs> See the problem. <laughs> so there has to be an awakening of that which doesn't change. And the only thing that doesn't change is the seeing of change. And that's transcendent of change. Yet it doesn't change. Seeing doesn't change. That transcends and includes all change. So with that, let's celebrate our 4th of July and uh, shoot off some fireworks because you are independent and free. <laughs>